Man. So a little bit about this episode. It aired almost 30 years ago. Oh, my gosh. November 1st, 1990 oh God, was the it. air date of this episode. It was the first episode produced for the second season. However, Fox decided because Bart had become a cultural phenomenon, they moved the episode Bart gets an F up to the front of the season and kicked this one back to the fourth episode of the season. Because Bartman, you know, uh, all the, what was, his, what was his catchphrase? I'm blanking on it now. Kiss my shorts. Eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. Eat my shorts. Yes, Kawabunga, eat my shorts. We were in the height of Bart Mania. As Kristen, as you mentioned, Homer wasn't really developed into the later Homer. He was still okay. pretty broad. Uh, Blinky, our three eyed fish, uh, actually appeared briefly in season one. In an episode, there you go. In the episode Homer's Odyssey, we see Blinky the three eyed fish briefly. Uh, and then this was the first season. The second season, when The Simpsons got popular, Fox moved it to Thursday nights with the Cosby Show. It was originally Sunday night, and it was moved Thursdays at eight to compete with the Cosby Show. Are you trying to kill it? All right. So, with no, with uh, without any further ado, if everyone is ready, let's. I got another audience member. Our cat. <laughs> All right. Act one. Bart and Lisa are fishing. A car pulls up and a man gets out. Ah, oh, so kids, caught anything? Not yet, sir. Uh -huh. What are you using for bait? My brother's using worms. But I, who feel the tranquility far outweighs the actual catching of fish, am using nothing. I see, and uh, what's your name, son? I'm Bart Simpson. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I'm Dave Sutton. I'm an investigative reporter who's on the road a lot, and uh, I must say that in my day, we didn't talk that way to our elders. Well, this is my day, and we do, sir. All right, we eat tonight. He reels the fish in, but there's something peculiar about it. It has three eyes. Wait a minute. One, two, three. He looks into the distance and sees the power plant pumping out waste into the lake. We see several newspaper headlines. Mutation caught at old fishing hole. Is power plant responsible? And fishing hole or fission hole. Burns denies responsibility in fish flap. Marge reads the newspaper at breakfast. Well, leave it to good old Mary Bailey to finally step in and do something about that hideous genetic mutation. Mary Bailey. Well, if I was governor, I'd sure find better things to do with my time. Like what? Like getting Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday back as separate paid holidays. President's Day. What a ripoff. I bust my butt day in and day out. You're late for work, Homer. So, someone will punch in for me. Try not to spill anything, Dad. Keep those mutants coming, Homer. All mutants, you! Homer arrives at work and proceeds to the lunchroom. Oh, man. Plain cake donuts. Thanks for taking all the fancies, guys. Why can't I get here on time? An announcement comes over the PA. Hi-ho, faceless employees. In a few moments, the government inspection team will be touring the plant. So look busy and keep your mouth shut. That is all. Very stirring, sir. Uh-oh, here they come. Hold me, Smithers. Okay, man. Geiger counters on. The Geiger counters go crazy. Ah, I suppose that's normal background radiation. The kind you find at any well-maintained nuclear facility. Or for that matter, playgrounds and hospitals. <laughs> Sorry. They begin the inspection. The inspector notes down details. Gum used to seal crack in cooling tower. Don't. I'm as shocked as you are. Plutonium rod used as paperweight. Don't. Now that shouldn't be. 
a drop of glowing green goo burns a hole through the inspector's <laughs> clipboard. Yeah, well, that's always been like that. They visit Homer's workstation. Homer is sleeping and wakes with a start. Ah, just, just uh, resting my eyes. Ah, well done. A rested employee is a vigilant employee. Ugh. Monitoring station unmanned. The inspectors stand in knee-deep, glowing green water. Look here, Inspector. In my office. The chief inspector is taken to Burns' office. Mr. Burns, in 20 years I've never seen such a shoddy, deplorable... Oh, look! Some careless person left thousands and thousands of dollars just laying here on my coffee table. Uh, Smithers, why don't we leave the room and hopefully... When we return, the pile of money will be gone. Don't look, Smithers. The money and the, a very stupid man are still here. Burns, if I didn't know better, I think you're trying to bribe me. Is there some confusion about this? Take it, take it, take it, you poor schmo. Mr. Burns, I'm going to overlook this felony. However, I will not overlook the 342 violations I observed in your plant today. Either bring this place up to code or we'll shut it down. Good day. Oh well, a little dab of paint here, a little speckle there. How much could it possibly cost to fix this place up? Approximately $56 million, sir. $56 million? Don't hit me, sir. Oh, then I have the strength to take it out on you, Smithers. Now, please go. I want to be alone. <laughs> Burns hits the bottle. Time passes from 5 to 9.30, and Burns is drunk. He starts singing, Brother, Can You Spare a Dime? Once I built a railroad, made it run, made it race against time. Once I built the railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? He stumbles down the long, empty corridor, singing, Half a million boots went slogging through hell, and I was a kid with that drum. Empty. Blah. He throws the bottle away, and it wakes Homer, who's still asleep at his workstation. Ah, just resting my eyes. Oh, <laughs> holy moly, 9.30? Hello, Mods. Sorry I didn't call, but it's been a madhouse down here. Yep, these 12-hour days are killing me. Echo! Outside in the car park, Burns is still singing and getting into his car. He called me Al. It was all Al on the time. Say, don't you remember? I'm your pal, buddy. Can you spare a dime? Homer walks up the window. Oh, uh, what the? Uh, Mr. Burns? <sighs> ah, so sorry, sir. It's just me. Homer Simpson, everything all right? Working late, Simpson? Uh, yes, sir. You and I are a need, Simpson. I'm going to share something with you. Hop in. Ooh, cushy. Homer, they're trying to shut us down. They say we're poisoning the planet. Well, nobody's perfect. Can't the government just get off our backs? You know, I was just telling the wife that if I was governor, I'd do things a lot differently. Oh, get off your soapbox, Simpson. Do you realize how much it costs to run for office? More than any honest man could afford. I bet you could afford it, though. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you're an honest man. I just mean that you could afford to run for governor if you felt like it. Of course, I'm just rambling cause, because you keep staring at me like that. But it, it's true. I mean, if you were a governor, you could decide what's safe and what isn't. Burns starts the car and drives off. Where are we going, sir? To create a new and better world. If it's on the way, could you drop me off at my house? And scene. <laughs> <laughs> there ends act one. Good job, everyone. All right. Act two. Homer reads the newspaper with the headline, Burns enters gubernatorial race. Well, he's got my vote. 
Homer, we're a Mary Bailey family. Mary Bailey isn't going to fire me if I don't vote for her. I'm for Monty Burns. Ooh, a political discussion at our table. I feel like a Kennedy. Well, frankly, I don't see how one of the most despicable men who ever lived has a chance against Mary Bailey, the most beloved governor of our great state, who's ever known. Mr. Burns calls a meeting. Now, here's a problem as I see it. While Governor Bailey is beloved by all, 98% of voters rate you despicable or worse. That's why we've assembled the finest campaign team money can buy. Your joke writer, your spitter, makeup man, and personal trainer. Their job is to turn this Mr. Burns into this Mr. Burns. Why are my teeth showing like that? Because you're smiling. Ah, excellent. This is exactly the kind of trickery I'm paying you for. But, but how do we turn your average six-pack or Joe six-pack against Mary Batty? We're this team of investigators. Your muckraker, your character assassin, your mudslinger, and your garbologist. Hello. Their job is to turn Mary Bailey from this into this. Ah, visual aids help so much. Thank you. Well, but first, there's a burning issue that we need to address and neutralize immediately. He shows Burns a picture of the three-eyed fish. Ugh, I hate that fish. Grandpa Simpson and the pensioners watch TV. Oh, TV announcer. Uh, I think we missed this part. Go ahead and do it. Thank you for watching Movie for a Dreary Afternoon. Please stay tuned for a paid political announcement brought to you by the friends of Montgomery Burns. Burns! Change the channel! You change it. No, you change it! I changed it last week. Fine, be a jerk. Then we'll just sit here and watch it. Oh no, an election? That's one of those deals where they close the bars, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Barney. <laughs> At the Simpsons' home. I wonder if he's going to say anything about that horrible fish. Oh, Marge, what's the big deal? I bet before the papers blew this all out of proportion, you didn't even know how many eyes the fish had. <sighs> Marge groans. The advisors prepare Burns for his campaign advertisement. 30 seconds to air, Mr. Burns. Now remember the smile. I am smiling. You'll have to do better than that. How's this? There you go. Oh, I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Well, we've done all we can. The rest is up to you. Oh, don't worry. By the time this paid political announcement is done, every Johnny lunch pail in this whole stupid state will be eating out of my hands. Oh, hello, friends. <laughs> Your next governor. And I'm here to talk to you about my little friend here, Blinky. Many of you consider it to be a hideous genetic mutation. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. But don't take my word for it. Let's ask an actor portraying Charles Darwin what he thinks. Hello, Mr. Burns. Oh, hello, Charles. Be a good fellow and tell your viewers about your theory of natural selection. Glad to, Mr. Burns. You see, every so often, Mother Nature changes our animals, giving them bigger teeth, sharper claws, longer legs, or in this case, a third eye. And if the variations turn out to be an improvement, the new animals thrive and multiply and spread across the face of the earth. Oh, so you're saying this fish might actually have an advantage over other fish. It might actually be kind of a super fish. I wouldn't mind having a third eye, would you? Uh, no. You see, friends, if our anti-nuclear naysayers and choose upsiders were to come upon an elephant frolicking in the waters, Next to our nuclear power plant, they probably blame his ridiculous nose on the nuclear boogeyman. The truth is, this fish is a miracle of nature with a taste that can't be beat. Mm. So, to summarize, say what you want about me. 
I can take the slings and arrows, but stop slandering poor, defenseless Blinky. Good night, and God bless. Political announcement finishes with Burns' campaign jingle. Only a moron wouldn't cast his vote for Monty Burns. Yay, superfish! I wish the government would get off his back. At the retirement home, that Burns is just what this state needs. Young blood! Back at the Simpson home. I hope Burns and I can count on your support, honey. Homie, I'm a Bailey booster. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm a, Bo a Burns booster. Ow! Congratulations, Mr. Burns. The latest polls show you're up six points. Giving me a total of? Six. <laughs> We're on our way. <laughs> Mary Bailey gives her own press conference. Who's Mary? Kristen, do you oh. need Mary Bailey? Sure. My worthy opponent seems to think that the voters of this state are gullible fools. I, however, prefer to rely on their intelligence and good judgment. Interesting strategy. Good luck. And I say taxes are too high. Burns holds a meeting with his advisors. Have you uh, found any dirt on Mary Bailey? Well, we've gone through our garbage. And we talked to our maid. And so far, the only negative thing we found is from some guy who dated her when she was 16. Uh, and? He uh, uh, felt her up. Bah! Not good enough. Burns gives another fiery speech. We're going to send a message to those bureaucrats down there in state capital. Homer and Bart watch on TV. Is your boss governor yet? Not yet, son. The voters now see you as imperial and godlike. Hot dog. Well, there's a downside to it. The latest polls indicate you're in danger of losing touch with a common man. Oh, dear. Heaven forfend. Which is why the night before the election, we want you to have dinners at the home of one of your workers. Oh, I get your angle. Every Joe Meatball and Sally Housecoat in this godforsaken state will see me hunkering down for chow with Eddie Punch Clock. The media will have a field day. Well, the only question is, can we find someone common enough? They look on the security monitors and see Homer eating, scratching himself, and belching. Ugh. Well, I knew there would be sacrifices. And scene. <laughs> there ends Act Two. Good night, everybody. Act three, the Simpsons eat breakfast. Oh, great toast, Marge. Oh, by the way, the night before the election, Mr. Burns is coming over for dinner. What? Oh, and some reporters and a camera crew, but you don't have to feed them. Cool, man, a media circus. Absolutely not. Come on, Marge. <sighs> I'm going to be ringing doorbells for Mary Bailey that night. Don't. Kids, please leave the room. I don't want you to see this. Uh-oh. The kids zip away. Homer gets on his knees and begs. Please, 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 please! <sighs> the campaign crew plaster the Simpsons' home with Burns posters, and the advisors prepare the family for the dinner. We're hoping one of the children might pop up with a question about the upcoming election. Little girl, do you think you can memorize this by dinner time tomorrow? Mr. Burns, your campaign seems to have the momentum of a runaway freight train. Why are you so popular? Very good. Mm, well, as long as I'm asking something, can I ask him to assuage my fears that he's contaminating the planet in a manner that may one day render it uninhabitable? No, dear. The card question will be just fine. Well, I think the non-card question is a valid... Marge! Don't worry. My daughter is very bright, and I'm sure she'll be able to memorize your question by dinner time tomorrow. And finally, Mr. Burns wants you to appear very affectionate towards him. But we must remind you, he hates being touched. That evening in bed, Homer tries to snuggle with Marge. 
but she keeps moving over until she falls out of the bed. Marge, get back in bed. No, I'm fine right here. What's wrong? I just want to snuggle. I don't feel like snuggling. What's that got to do with it? I don't want to snuggle with anyone who's not letting me express myself. But you do get to express yourself in the lovely home you keep and the food you serve. <sighs> okay, Homer, fair enough. You've got it. All right, good. That's it. That's how I'm going to express myself. That's right. Good night. Huh? It's time for the dinner. The family, along with the pets, are in makeup. A makeup man gives Homer new eyebrows. Well, what do you think? Hey, hello, handsome. Hey, get that stuff off his face. We're here to have dinner with a common man, not Tyrone Power. <laughs> Latest polls are in. It's dead even, 50-50. This cornball stunt is going to put us over the top. Whoa, he's here. Burns arrives. He rings the doorbell, and the family all come to the door. Hello, Homer, Marge. You look dazzling. Oh, and look, I brought noodle kugel. Suddenly, Santa's little helper jumps up and knocks Mr. Burns over. Bad dog. Bad neighbor dog. Here, let me help you up, Mr. Burns. I love dogs. Babies, too. Snowball, too, then dives at Burns and knocks him flying again. <laughs> Here, kitty, kitty. Uh, are you all right, Mr. Burns? Oh, of course. A little rough housing with these pets is good for a man's appetite. They go inside and sit down at the table. Burns' advisors whispers to him. Uh, Mr. Burns, the way his polls are in, it's dead even. 50-50. Statesman like when you handle the pet incident has put you over the top. We are ahead 51 to 49. Congratulations, Mr. Governor. Excellent. Bart, would you like to say grace? Dear God, we paid for all this stuff ourselves, so thanks for nothing. <gasps> Everyone gasps. <laughs> <laughs> Only an innocent child could get away with such blasphemy. God bless them all. Amen. He's smoking. He's smoking. Um, you, you know, Mr. Burns, my family and I um feel uh. that taxes are too high. Where do you stand on this highly controversial issue? Goodness, I didn't realize this casual dinner was going to turn into a charged political debate. I was only leaving with the card. Homer. I agree with you, and if I'm elected governor, I will lower taxes, whether those bureaucrats in the state capitol like it or not. <clears throat> Lisa, do you have a question you would like to ask your Uncle Montgomery? Yes, sir, a very inane one. Mr. Burns, your campaign seems to have the momentum of a runaway freight train. Why are you so popular? Ooh, a tough question, but a fair one. Lisa, there's no single answer. Some voters respond to my integrity, Others are more impressed with my incorruptibility. Still, others, by my determination to lower taxes and the beer cats in the state capital can put that in their pipes and smoke it. Lisa's in the kitchen. Mom, that felt awful. Mm, I'm sorry, dear. It will all be over soon. But mom, we've become the tools of evil. Lisa, you're learning many lessons tonight. And one of them is to always give your mother the benefit of the doubt. They go back into the dining room with the main course, where Burns is still ranting. Give a decent break, or a fair shake, or even a square deal. Mmm, smells delightful. Marge lifts up the cover off the plate. The main course is three-eyed fish. Everyone <gasps> gasps. <gasps> All right, three-eyed fish. Can I have your plate, Mr. Burns? Burns shudders and gives her his plate. He takes one bite of the fish and spits it out. As it flies through the air, the reporters flash their cameras and leave before it hits the ground. He's blown it for sure. Ruined before it hit the ground. Outside. Get, get me the city desk. Here's your headline, Phil. Phil, here's your headline, Phil. Burns can't swallow his own story. The family, Burns, and his advisors watch the news report. 
The latest polls indicate Burns' popularity has plummeted to earth like so much half-chewed fish. <laughs> you must have a few tricks up your sleeve, Smithers. Boil some coffee. We're not licked yet. Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> Come on, boys. The old guy's finished. Wait! Come back! You can't do this to me! I'm Charles Montgomery Barnes! He starts wrecking the Simpsons' home. He tries to turn a table over, but can't. Smithers, turn this table over for me. Yes, sir. Homer, make him stop! Uh, Mr. Burns? Mr. Burns? Shut up and wreck something! Homer does so. Lisa intervenes. Mr. Burns, I hardly see what destroying our meager possessions is going to accomplish. She's right. Take me home, Smithers. We'll enjoy something tasteful. Ironic, isn't it, Smithers? This anonymous clan of slack-jawed troglodytes has cost me the election. And yet, if I were to have them killed, I would be the one to go to jail. That's democracy for you. You are noble and poetic in defeat, sir. Simpson, I shall make it the focus of my remaining years that your dreams will go unfulfilled. Uh-oh, you're busted, Dad. Later that night, Homer sits in bed, worrying. Oh, my dreams will go unfulfilled. Oh, no, I don't like the sound of that one bit. That means I have nothing to hope for, Marge. Make it better, please. Can't you make it better? Huh? Homie, when a man's biggest dreams include seconds on dessert, occasional snuggling, and sleeping in until noon on weekends, no one man can destroy them. Hey, you did it! They kiss, Marge turns the lights off, and the credits roll. The end. See Yay! Thanks. Very good. Woo! Excellent. That was awesome. Yeah. That was fun. You guys are all great. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Yeah, yeah. Great idea, BJ. Thanks for putting it together. Yeah. Thank great you, idea. BJ.